so a case of a neurologically devastated child with large head and paralysis and hyperreflexia so these are the images provided so as you can see that this is the axial t1 weighted mri and the triplanar this is the t2 weighted mri sequence axial sagittal and coronal sequence so they show all of these images they show absence of uh, nearly all the supratentorial brain tissue there is totally absent brain tissue here supratentorial there is totally absent supratentorial brain tissue uh, with an enlarged cranial vault which is filled with csf so this is all csf this is all csf there's no absolutely no brain tissue here supratentorial brain tissue so there's absence of nearly all the supratentorial brain tissue with an enlarged cranial vault which is filled with csf and uh, uh, however as you can see here that uh, the brain stem is present a uh, few parts of the diencephalon and the cerebellum they are present here okay so the brain stem is present here the brain stem is here few parts of the diencephalon and the cerebellum they are present here and there is a very minimal rind of residual tissue in the occipital regions here so you can see that there is a minimal rind of residual tissue brain tissue in the occipital regions here other than that there is total absence of any supratentorial brain tissue so this is a typical picture of hydranencephaly this is a case of hydranencephaly and in the differentials you can include allobar holoprosencephaly maximal hydrocephalus and large bilateral open lip schizencephaly okay next is a newborn with an abnormally detected there was an abnormality detected on cranial ultrasound so these are the images provided so as you can see that uh, this is the ultrasound image this is the sagittal and the coronal sequence so it shows a hyperechoic midline mass this is the hyperechoic midline mass along the anterior corpus callosum and the uh, interhemispheric fissure so this is the interhemispheric fissure and uh, along the anterior corpus callosum there is a hyperechoic midline mass you know and uh, here this is coron coronal sequence you can see that there is a hyperechoic midline mass along the anterior corpus callosum and the interhemispheric fissure now these are the mri sequences this is the t1 axial t1 weighted sequence and uh, it shows a hyper intense mass which is adjacent to the anterior aspect of the corpus callosum so this is the anterior aspect of the corpus callosum adjacent to it there here it is the mass the this is a sagittal sequence and it is showing the same mass adjacent to the anterior aspect of the corpus callosum and uh, as you can see that the uh, anterior body and genu of the corpus callosum are present they are present here the anterior body and uh, here the anterior body and genu of the corpus callosum are present but the posterior body and splenium are absent here okay the posterior body and splenium are absent here okay so this is the coronal t2 weighted mri sequence and uh, it is showing again that uh, uh, the mass is iso intense and it is uh, the, here this is the mass and it is just uh, uh, it is adjacent and it is just superior to the corpus callosum okay so this is the mass this is the mass and this is the corpus callosum and that is why we are saying that this is iso intense because there is absolutely no uh, signal intensity uh, abnormal signal intensity noted here it is quite subtle it is iso intense to the uh, corpus callosum and it is just superior to it and uh, the hypo intense band this is the that hypo intense band that we are talking about the hypo intense band along its inferior margin is actually representing the chemical shift artifact which is a very typical um, finding for any fat containing lesion okay so this is the chemical shift artifact and um, 
This is that chemical shift artifact. This is the isoattenuating mass adjacent to the superior aspect of the corpus callosum. So these imaging findings are typical for uh, the case of dysgenesis of corpus callosum with lipoma. So basically this lesion is lipoma and this is the dysgenesis of the corpus callosum. So this is a case of dysgenesis of the corpus callosum with lipoma. This chemical shift artifact is basically because of the lipoma, lesion lipoma. So the differentials uh, can include pericallosal hemorrhage because of the hyperintensity or at, uh, in the T1 sequence. So they can you can include hemorrhage in it, pericallosal hemorrhage. Uh, you can include intracranial dermoid in it because of the fat chemical shift artifact dermoid intracranial teratoma and uh, all the lipomatous elements in other tumors like meningiomas and you know, ectodermal tumors you can include them in the differential as well so this is a case of dysgenesis of the corpus callosum with lipoma next is a 13 year old boy presenting with headaches and uh, these are the images provided so as you can see that there is an enhancing mass this is the enhancing mass in the right lateral ventricle in the right lateral ventricle at the foramen of monroe and also you can see that there are subependymal nodules you can see here this is these are the subependymal nodules uh, which are actually uh, lining the surface of the right lateral ventricle and the cortical tubers as well cortical tubers as well so this is uh, with this constellation of findings, the practical diagnosis is quite limited. It consists largely of subependymal hematoma. So, this is a case of subependymal giant cell astrocytoma uh, associated with uh, tuberous sclerosis, of course. So, this is a case of tuberous sclerosis saga. Next is a 53 year old man uh, presenting with the metastatic renal cell carcinoma. Uh, presenting with headaches, confusion, vomiting, blood pressure is quite elevated. It is 210 by 120 mm mercury. So, as you can see, these are the images provided in the. Now you can see that uh, the flare sequence here, axial flare sequence, shows hyper intense lesions in the bilateral uh, parietal and occipital lobes here okay in the bilateral uh, occipital lobes and the parietal lobes as you can see here in the bilateral parietal and occipital lobes as well as uh, less extensive uh, lesions in the there are some few lesions in the in, here in the right frontal lobe okay so there is lesion in the right right frontal lobe in the right parietal in the parietal lobe and um, in the bilateral parietal lobe and in the occipital regions so the subcortical white matter is more severely affected than the adjacent cortex we can see that this is the subcortical white matter and it is more severely affected than the here we can see that the cortex is almost spared so these lesions they do not enhance here you can see this is a post contrast sequence so there's no enhancement of these lesions on the post contrast sequence so also the basal ganglia are normal here the basal ganglia they appear normal so basal ganglia are normal so this imaging picture along with the blood pressure uh, the hypertensive uh, um, history is uh, correlating with the diagnosis of posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome that is press and uh, this is the diagnosis here however in the differentials you can put adam acute disseminated in cephalomyelitis and hypoxic ischemic injury toxic or metabolic encephalopathy and progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy pml if the patient has history of hiv so uh, next We have a 10 year old patient with an asymmetric face as well as numbness and weakness in the extremities and skin lesions. So, these are the images provided here. So, we can see that uh, on the axial T2 weighted sequence and the post contrast uh, T1 weighted image, they show the abnormal shape of this uh, right sphenoid wing. 
you know, here. The right sphenoid wing has an abnormal shape. This is the right sphenoid wing. There is uh, also, there is uh, irregular hair thickening and enhancement in the right temporal skin and subcutaneous tissues. Okay, so this is the right temporal skin and subcutaneous tissues and they're showing abnormal irregular thickening and enhancement in this, in this location. This is the T2-weighted axial sequence and it shows a small foci of T2 hyperintensity here in the bilateral basal ganglia. So these are the small foci of hyperintensities, T2 hyperintensities in the bilateral basal ganglia. Okay. Now here, this is the coronal image, T2-weighted MRI through the neck and upper chest and it shows that there are bilateral bilateral lobular masses within the neural foramina and along the cervical and thoracic nerve roots. So there are multiple bilateral lobular masses within the neural foramina and along the cervical and thoracic nerve roots in the coronal T2-weighted images. So this is a typical imaging presentation of neurofibromatosis type 1 and uh, in the differentials, I mean, this is quite virtually, it is pathognomonic for NF1. However, for the isolated findings of the, uh, we can put uh, the, for the NF1 bright spots, I mean, the bright spots that we are seeing here. So for, the, for those findings only, you can uh, put demyelinating disorders in the differentials, viral encephalitis or mitochondrial diseases or small glial tumors. For the thicker nerves, uh, you can put uh, the differentials of schwannoma and uh, chronic inflammatory demyelinating, demyelinating polyneuropathy, that is CIDP and the hereditary uh, motor sensory neuropathies. So this is a case of neurofibromatosis NF1. Now next is a 46 year old man uh, presenting with the seizure activity and uh, these are the images provided. Now as you can see that there is a large bilobe, you know, it's bilobe basically. This, this is one lobe and this is the other lobe. So there is a large bilobe uh, intraaxial mass in the right frontal lobe and uh, there is marked visogenic edema as you can see here there's marked visogenic edema and mass effect with the the effacement of the uh, frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle here yeah, the right lateral ventricle is not shown not evident here so effacement of the frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle along with subfalcine herniation you can see that there is subfalcine herniation here. Okay, this is the subfalcine herniation. So on non-contrast CT, this mass is homogeneously hyperdense. This is hyperdense. This is homogeneously hyperdense on the non-contrast CT scan. A small amount of this, you can see pneumocephalus here due to the recent biopsy. There is a small amount of pneumocephalus here due to the recent biopsy. On MRI, you can see that this mass shows. Uh, here, this mass shows the um, ISO2 hyperintense signal on uh, T2. Okay, so there is ISO2 hyperintense uh, signal on T2. However, I don't think that this is T2 uh, weighted imaging. Okay, so there's uh, ISO2 hyperintense signal on T2. And uh, also on the post-contrast scan, you can see that there is homogeneous enhancement and DWI shows the hyperintensity, which is quite evident. So this is the DWI sequence and on DWI, this is showing diffusion restriction, it is hyperintense. Also on the post-contrast, homogeneous enhancement and it is on T2, it is ISO2 hyperintense. Also, there are additional lesions uh, there are additional lesions which are here, which are seen within the atria of the uh, bilateral ventricles. These are the atria of the bilateral ventricles and they are showing some few additional lesions. So this is a typical case of primary CNS lymphoma. This is a case of primary CNS lymphoma. And in the differentials, you can add GBM and metastatic neoplasm. So... Another case of 14 year old uh, presenting otherwise healthy girl who is presenting with amenorrhea. So these are the uh, images provided. So you can see that this is the 
uh, axial and this is the coronal CT images and they show a gap. This is the gap within the central aspect of the sphenoid bone through which a low attenuation pouch is protruding inferiorly into the nasopharynx. Okay, this is this is the gap through which the this is a gap in the sphenoid bone, central aspect of the sphenoid bone, through which a low attenuation pouch is protruding inferiorly into the nasopharynx. This is the nasopharynx here. Okay, so the sagittal T1 weighted MRI and this is the coronal T2 weighted MRI. They show that this protrusion of the intracranial contents is actually composed of CSF signal. Now, this has CSF signal, you know, because this is T1 dark on T1 weighted imaging and it is T2 bright on T2 weighted imaging, you know, and parts of the in pituitary infundibulum, a uh, few parts of the pituitary infundibulum and the optic chiasm are uh, displaced inferiorly okay few parts of the pituitary infundibulum and optic chiasm are displaced inferiorly so the this is a typical case of uh, cephalocele sphenoidal cephalocele and uh, in the differentials uh, you can put frontonasal and frontoethmoidal uh, cephaloceles nasal glioma dermoid hemangioma and in the sphenoidal uh, Regions you can put nasopharyngeal tumors with the skull base involvement and orbital neurofibromas, and the, in the occipital lesions you can put destructive uh, tumors of the skull. So this is a case of cephalocele, sphenoidal cephalocele. Next is 52-year-old woman uh, with epilepsy, refractory to medications, and these are the images provided. Now, as you can see that. Uh, the coronal MRI images, they show the asymmetry of the hippocampus. It is normal on the right side. However, it's quite atrophic on the left side. This is the hippocampus on the left side. This is the hippocampus on the right side. Look at the volume difference in both sides. On the right side, it is normal. On the left side, it is atrophic. The atrophic uh, uh, hippocampus has abnormal hyperintense. Now, this is the uh, this is the T2 weighted sequence, and this is the flare sequence, and uh, this is the flare sequence. And you can see that there is a focus of hyperintensity here. So it is abnormally hyperintense on T2. It is hyperintense on T2 as well as flare images. You know, this is the flare sequence coronal, this is the T2 sequence, and it's abnormally hyperintense. So, this is a typical imaging picture of mesial temporal sclerosis. This is a case of mesial temporal sclerosis. And uh, in the differentials, you can put chronic injury, that is old trauma, encephalitis, glial tumors, and seizure edema. Next is a 33-year-old man presenting with the history of multiple abdo abdominal surgeries and now presenting with headache and seizures. So these are the images provided. As you can see that on the post contrast T1 weighted image, there's a rim enhancing, there's a right sided rim enhancing mass and uh, the rim of this enhancing uh, tissue is quite smooth. This rim is quite smooth and it is uniform. So you have to describe the rim of this lesion uh, because uh, it is a considered basic thing, it's a basic finding to formulate the differentials. So if the rim of this enhancing tissue is smooth and uniform, okay, so now we are going to decide the differentials. This T2-weighted image shows a thin rim of uh, hyperintense material. There's a thin rim of hyperintense material corresponding to the margins of this enhancing rim. Okay, so you can see that this is the rim. However, there is a, a hypo-intense, uh, you know, material corresponding uh, to the margins of this enhancing rim. Also, there is extensive edema surrounding this lesion. And this is the DWI sequence and it shows the majority of the material in this uh, non-enhancing center of the mass is hyper-intense. So, the material is hyper-intense. However, this is the enhancing rim which is relatively uh, smooth and uniform. So this is a typical imaging presentation of biogenic cerebral abscess that is streptococcus mullerii. 
this is the imaging uh, diagnosis here pyogenic cerebral abscess and in the differentials you can put fungal or mycobacterial or amoebic abscesses metastatic neoplasm primary cns neoplasm or tumefactive demyelination that is the typical differentials of the ring enhancing lesions so this is the case of pyogenic cerebral abscess Next is a 63-year-old man with vertigo and incidental imaging findings, few incidental imaging findings. So these are the images provided. So as you can see, uh, this is the T2-weighted MRI. This is the T1 post-contrast MRI sequence. This is post-contrast. This is T1 and this is T2 axial sequence. So this lesion, there's a lesion here which is uh, hyper-intense on T2. So you can see this is located in the frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle adjacent to the uh, foramen of Monroe and it is abutting the septum pellucidum. Okay, so it's abutting the septum pellucidum. It is adjacent to the foramen of Monroe and uh, there is a, on the post contrast, it is, uh, you know, you can see that this is, it is hyper intense on T2. It is iso intense on T1. It's quite iso intense on T1 and uh, there is a small internal, uh, there are small internal foci of enhancement in this lesion. Small internal foci of enhancement in this lesion on the post contrast sequence. So, so the diagnosis is subependymoma. This is a case of subependymoma. And in the differentials, you can include central neurocytoma, uh, subependymal giant cell astrocytoma, choroid plexus papilloma or carcinoma, and metastasis. So, this is a case of subependymoma. Next is a 22-year-old graduate student found unresponsive in the apartment. The student was found unresponsive and these are the images that are provided. So, you can see that uh, this is the axial flare sequence and uh, these are the axial flare sequences and uh, this is the DWI and this is ADC mapping. So, there is... Uh, as you can see, there is symmetric hyperintensity. Uh, there is quite symmetric hyperintensity in uh, both the globus pallidae. Okay, and uh, here you can see that there is ill-defined hyperintense signal in the centrum semi-oval bilaterally. So this is the centrum semi-oval. This hyperintensity is noted in the centrum semi-oval bilaterally, and this one is actually in the globus pallidae along with let's see the restriction let's see whether they are diffusion restriction yes this is dwi this is hyper intense on dwi and it is hypo intense on adc which is consistent with diffusion restriction so the top differential will be carbon monoxide poisonings this is a case of carbon monoxide poisoning however in the differentials you can put hypoxic ischemic injury cocaine encephalopathy and wilson disease this is a case of carbon monoxide poisoning Next is a 26-year-old woman presenting with severe headaches and left eye pain. These are the images provided. Now, as you can see that on CT, no, this is the non-contrast CT scan, and it shows that there is an area of hypoattenuation. Okay, there is an area of hypoattenuation, which is giving mass effect. And along with it, there are coarse calcifications here in the left frontal lobe. So, this is the lesion in the left frontal lobe which has coarse calcifications, it is giving mass effect and there is obviously it is hypoattenuating. Also, you can see here, very subtle, but there is thinning of the adjacent calvarium. This is the thinning of the adjacent calvarium along with this lesion. Okay. On the MRI, we can see that uh, this is the T2 weighted sequence and we can see that this is the hyper intense mass here, which is involving the cortex and white matter both. This is the T1 weighted sequence or and this lesion is hypo intense on T1. Also, this is the post contrast scan provided here and you can see that there is a rim enhancement in this lesion. There are two rim enhancing cystic areas. Now, basically, there are two rim enhancing areas. One is this one, and the other is this one. So, there are two rim enhancing cystic areas. Uh, this medial one has a fluid fluid level, which is consistent with this one, has a fluid fluid level, which is consistent with hemorrhage. So, this is a typical case of oligodendroglioma. 
and uh, in the differentials uh, you can put astrocytoma, ganglioglioma, DNET and pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma.